So good afternoon everybody. Um, last presentation of the day. I hope you'll stick with me and I hope you find it somewhat interesting. Um, my name is Aileen Murray and I work with a company uh, called the Yall Socio-Economic Development Group. And I suppose before we go any further into the presentation, um, I'll explain what our group is about and how we fit into this whole project. Um, back in 2006-2007, Yall, you probably know of it, a seaside town in East Cork, um, had suffered, had started to really suffer the effects of recession. Um, it had lost a huge amount of industry, of manufacturing industry, and it was really was starting to look and focus back on its natural assets of natural heritage and built heritage. So at that time, the local authority, um, Yall Town Council, it would have been at the time, um, looked about, I suppose, setting up a group, pretty much a task force, um, to see how we could move forward. Um, and really this was focused on heritage-led regeneration for the town. So they were the drivers of setting up this group, this Yall Socio-Economic Development Group. And what it was, was bringing together all of the different agencies. So you'd have a representative, we'll say, from your local um, development partnership company, um, a representative from Fold Ireland, Enterprise Ireland, the Chamber of Commerce and um, the, some local councillors as well. So they would meet probably about every two months but I was appointed the manager. Um, now we didn't have very many resources and we still don't to this day so it's pretty much myself, an administrator and a number of really good uh, community employment people. So we were the task force um, I was the person really working on the ground and it was this project was one of the key projects that was put on our desk um, to see if we could pretty much move it on. So today um, in presenting to you, I suppose I'm going to give you an overview of the entire process. Um, I can't believe I'm actually standing here eight years later and I was, Liam asked me to speak a couple of weeks ago and I was like oh my god thanks for god I can actually stand up and say we are open because I've, I've come to these and people ask are you open yet are you open yet but finally we are um, I'll talk to you some about the about the lessons that we learned going through this process um, tell you a little bit about the final product and just to tell you it is worth it all at the very end so what is the old clock gate tower um, it's an iconic structure, many of you will know it, in the centre of Yall. Um, the building itself is over 250 years old, but the site, the actual site that it's built on, goes back over 700 years. Um, Yall being a medieval town, um, this was actually one of the gateways into the main town, and on the other side of it was a base town. So it was, it was a physical divide, but it was also a social and an economic divide. So who owns it? The building is actually owned by Cork County Council. It was obviously previously Yall Town Council and then when they were abolished, Cork County Council. But they actually leased it to the company that I work for, the Yall Socioeconomic Development Group, um, pretty much, I suppose, to see um, if we could you know, move it on, but really to draw down the funding and see where we could source the funding to actually develop the project. Um, so what's its significance? It's a national monument, it's synonymous with the town, and it's really, I suppose, for so many years, people were looking at it and saying, can anything be done with this building? And it was always a sign, I suppose, as, as things got worse in the town, my God, if that was open, wouldn't it be a great boost to the people of the town? So all in all, the whole project from the start, from um, when we started it off in 2008 um, to its completion, um, it's cost in around €750,000. Now, I'm not going to go into too much detail on this slide, but just to, to show you, this is where we got um, funding for all of, you know, there's many different aspects there. Um, we... we tapped everybody I suppose really for funding and uh, starting off of course with the Heritage Council of Ireland who really got the ball rolling um, they um, gave 50,000 to uh, Yall Town Council at the time to um, undertake a feasibility study on the future uses of the building so that involved I remember sitting down in the the town hall at the time and all the different stakeholders and saying okay 
what are we going to do with this? And you had all of these different opinions. But the feasibility study at the end was came up with um, the most viable solution, they said, was that it would, should be turned into a visitor attraction, but taking account of the fact that it's a national monument and that, you know, a listed building that, you know, to be careful as to, you know, to be, I suppose, sympathetic to the fact that it was a national monument. So there was going to be a lot of restrictions on it. So it was going to be a difficult task to keep all of those um, together. So as you can see, we got funding from the Enterprise Board. CCAD is our local um, development partnership. And you can see there, and I'll explain a little bit further on these as we go along. Um, they really were, were key to all of this as well in moving us on um, and fall to Ireland more recently as well. But you can see there the figure at the bottom is 474,000. That then was match funded and to make up the shortfall for, by the local authority, by Cork County Council. So the initial steps, as I said, the feasibility study, um, it recommended that it would be a visitor attraction with limited access. So we knew from the outset that anything we developed was only going to be able to allow us to take 20 people at any one time. Um, the next step, so we had that, we had this wonderful plan and it was like, okay, when are you going to open? So that's when the real work actually started for us. Um, the Enterprise Board gave us money for a business plan didn't turn out really to be a business plan it was a bit all over the place but I suppose it got us to really think about what the approach was going to be and it focused us on that we weren't going to be able to do everything together so break it down into two very specific phases so the first of those was conservation and restoration works and then once you had that done and it was fit for purpose then you could think about um, the interpretation and what you were going to put into it. So that's the one thing I would say if you know I'm talking to people about this, what, what's the one thing? Just break it down into phases and, and concentrate on getting it getting it right first of all. We were look, we were lucky we had somebody locally actually as well who worked um, for the National Monuments Service as well, who was pointing us in the right direction. So that kind of knowledge really, you know, we, we drew from all different sources. So as I said, first priority, a conservation and management plan, and that would dictate the approach to be undertaken to secure the building. We went to our local uh, development partnership, um, CCAD, who, as I said at the very start, they were one of the people that sit around the table with us as well, who meet every two months. So we were able to say to them, this is what we need to do. Can we make an application? So that's how we went about that. We got our quotations, and it recommended then a series of essential works. Obviously, before any works could be undertaken, we had to do the usual, the consents and the permissions, um, ministerial consent, and um, sorry, ministerial consent, and then the declaration, then as well. Just, okay, so yet yeah, the um, really just give yourselves loads of time for the ministerial consent, and it was probably talked about earlier as well, and then we had to do the declaration. <laughs> Um, application for declaration to Cork County Council even though the building was in the ownership of Cork County Council we still had to do that as well so it's, you know it's a bit crazy doubling up on all of the work but I suppose the one thing as well is give yourselves plenty of time to get all of these in um, because I know some other projects that were applying for funding around the same time as us it took longer for them to get the consents and get everything in order and by that time some of the, the funding was actually gone. So that, that's really important. So um, we appointed uh, conservation engineers, um, David Kelly partnership to oversee the tendering process. So as I said we had our permissions in place um, then we went um, to the tendering process. They managed all of that pretty much for us and the costings came in at 243,000. So got all of those in, and then we were able to make our application um, to CCAD under the Rural Development Programme for a series of works, as I said, that were set out in the conservation plan. So there's a whole series of works, internal and external, to get the building fit for purpose as well. So a lengthy process. 
I'm not going to go through all of these, but um, I think some of the earlier speakers mentioned the checklist. It's endless, as you probably know, in order to um, to get everything in place. Um, you know, there's just some of the things, you know, de minimis funding. Um, that's something now that, you know, you can't go over a limit. I think there's a 200,000 that might be changing in any three years. So if you've got funding for other stuff that's de minimis, deemed de minimis, it will take from what you actually, the, the maximum amount that you can actually get. Audited accounts, um, insurance, um, you know, you have to go then to other places. We had to go to the Heritage Council to say that they wouldn't fund us. We had to go to Fall to Ireland and get letters to say that they wouldn't fund us. So the checklist is pretty much endless. So just a few images of some of the actual conservation works there. The repointing. Um, I suppose it took about the cupola on the uh, the 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 um, roof of the building. It took about six months to complete that work. Um, obviously the sign off and all of the retention fees, and then you had to go through the whole process of drawing down the funding. Then after. Um, so then obviously I started to get the questions. Then when are you going to open? So. That if we to start all over again, we were only about a third of the way through it. So with all of that work done, it was like a shell, but it was fit for purpose. So now, okay, what are we going to put in there? Um, and I know Liam really mentioned it earlier on, the interpretation side of it. We wanted to make sure that what we were putting in was going to be mem memorable, authentic. It was going to be something that people were going to, um, you know, the word of mouth that it wasn't just going to be something gimmicky, you know, that we were really going to stay true to, to the values as well of the, the site and put something in there that, that, that was, you know, authentic. Um, again, we went back to CCAD um, to, we got funding from them again for an interpretive plan. We got our three quotations and a company by the name of Scroop Design, we went on to work with them so there was a whole series. They developed a wonderful um, interpretive plan for us. And the interpretive plan was really telling the story. So they went off, they did a huge amount of research for that interpretive plan. And the storyline really, I suppose, it's the story of y'all. It's the story of the clock tower told over 700 years. Um, and there's some really wonderful personal stories. Um, and what they've actually done is they set it out so that each floor would have its own story and each floor would be a period in time. So we went through, as I said, the different phases, the appointment of these uh, professional services team. It actually, we went back to eTenders again and um, it was actually the company who done the interpretive plan who actually won the contract then for the um, planning designs and the fit out as well. So, okay, here we are, we now have our, we now have our designs, we have our interpretive plan, and we're kind of going, okay, where do we go from here now for funding? And then we heard uh, about two years ago about this Ireland's ancient East might be coming um, out. So we were like, this actually really fits with what we're trying to do as well. And um, <coughs> last year, we made an application. Oh yeah, sorry, I should have said in the interpretive plan we got um, an approximate costing as well. So we knew it was going to cost about 200,000 to actually kit it out and to do all of this, this, this side of it. So um, we, and then I suppose it was a stroke of, of luck in some ways, but it just, I suppose we've been through the ringer since 2008, looking for funding and, and going on the different phases, but um, it just so happened that the uh, Ireland's Ancient East, Cap East Capital Grant Scheme, their maximum was 200,000. So we made the application. We thought we'd, we'd fly it. We said we have a fabulous interpretive plan and everything like that. And then uh, we, I got a phone call just before the announcements were supposed to be made to say um, you weren't actually successful this year round, this time round, and we were devastated. But they said they came to meet us and they actually said, "Look, don't be disheartened. You just didn't mention Ireland's ancient East often enough, right?" So it was like, "Oh my God, okay." 
So back to the drawing board again, but look, we, we put it in and we got the maximum the next time round. So um, it made it all the sweeter, I suppose. So again, we had to go back then and do our whole tendering process and everything like that as well with through Fault Ireland. But I have to say, I don't think it was as bad, to be honest, as the, the leader funding. Um, so <laughs> it wasn't as painful. Um, so, well, we still haven't done the Fault Ireland drawdown yet, so that's, that's another story. Um, so we had 17 companies, actually, that we were working with. We went to e-tenders because it's so, it was so specialised. Um, so we had a specialist joiner, specialist painter, um, you know, the, the signage, all of that inside, and it was very specialised. So we didn't go off and just get one production company to do the whole lot. We, we were very specific in what we wanted. So the end result, um, I'll show you some photos here. About two weeks, it'll be two weeks actually on Friday, um, we finally opened the doors. And what we actually um, did was, we did a free day for the people of Yall. So we ran tours on the hour um, from nine in the morning through to, to five in the evening. And I, I had put together some press releases and that, and didn't thought it might be picked up locally, but I don't know if any of you saw it, it was on the, the RT news and it was on the TV3 news as well. So people were saying, is this your official opening? I was like, no, this is only a soft opening. But it was good to kind of get people in and that as well and get the feedback. But I think what people actually were amazed by, especially the local people, we didn't give away too much of the storyline in advance. And there was kind of a, a, a lockdown and any photography or anything in advance. And what they were amazed by was the actual story, you know, that it's, that it, you know, that it was... It was true um, and that it wasn't a gimmicky sort of a, you know, I think because I was getting phone calls even up to a few weeks before we're doing an art exhibition. Is there any way we could put something into the clock eight? I'm like, oh, no, they've no idea what's actually coming here, you know, but uh, just to take it through some of the, um, the images there. So just think this is actually quite a small space now as well so this is the the ground floor it's the 1400s it's y'all and we're telling the story about the merchant town um our guides are actually what we call storytellers so they're telling a story um and they're very engaging we um, you know we really worked on um training them and you know sort of bring out that storytelling element the guides actually they weren't given a script to read off they were given a huge amount of information um and you know pointed in the right direction but they all developed their own script so it's it's every every storyteller's script is very personal it was used as a jail as well so we've um recreated the the jail scene um the kids are loving it already but it's you know it's again i suppose it's not very um the the whole setup as well again we talked about there's not a load of graphic panels you know it's it's very visual and um, we have sound effects and if you're standing on one side of the room you're getting the exact same experience as somebody at, a, at the other side of the room so you're not trying to to focus on graphic panels there's a number of um, uh, audio visual presentations as well but they're only really to enhance the whole um presentation throughout the whole experience as well there's um I suppose there was always an element of timekeeping. There's one of the floors is dedicated to the to the clock and the bell. That actual clock itself in there, that in itself is actually 350 years old. Um, so we talk about the winding of the clock and everything like that. And then the tower actually was, um, it was actually um, used as a home. The family actually lived in the house up until the, the late 50s. And uh, the McGraths, John McGrath, is still a resident of Yall today and his family as well. So there's a story in there. We got to have a wonderful video from John and he tells his story as well. But there, that's what we've done is recreated the, the um, kitchen on the top floor then. There are just some of the artifacts there and there's a, a recreated scene of, of how the house was. So just there are all the different stages I'm not going to go through them all there again, but it was a long process. Um, as I said, starting off in 2008, finally open now. Um, our business plans um, have estimated, and we're pretty, we're pretty um, 
sure, well, I can't say that, I suppose, too, too definitely, we're only open two weeks, but that our business plans estimate that we will be worth 1.4 million to the local economy. And this would be huge to y'all, right in the centre of the town. And also, more so even than that, it's a symbol of hope as well. Um, you know, this building, this monstrosity of a building right in the centre of town. Um, it really, I think, epitomises heritage-led regeneration. And I think through perseverance and determination, that will see you through. So please come visit. And our website is live, so yallclockgate.ie. Okay.